Christopher. Welcome back to the Daily Truth Report. And on screen is our good friend returning back by popular demand. Many, many people have asked for Mark Taylor. He's finally back with us today. And uh, longtime re uh, watchers of this channel and, and readers of our website uh, will certainly know Mark. Some of you may be new, and this may be the first time you're seeing him, but we're so happy to have him back on. We finally reconnected. Mark, welcome back to the show. Uh, thank you for having me, brother. It's always an honor to be on here. Yeah, it is. It is so great to catch up with you. And uh, we're going to we're going to talk a little bit about where you've been, what you've been doing, uh, where people can find you. But but we're just so excited to have you back on a little uh, history is uh, Mark is uh, a, a firefighter and, and by trade. And, and uh, I, I think he's retired now, but yeah. but he, he would get these prophetic words about about uh, President Trump well before he even ran. I think, Mark, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but back to. 2011. I mean, yep. we're talking well, well, it's not just 2015 before he announced this was a long time ago. And Mark started telling people about it. And then he started writing them down and then he started publishing them. And, and it's, it's, and then of course he was uh, uh, vindicated, I guess is the right word and proven, proven that the words were correct in 2016. And he's just been a favorite of ours to talk to ever since. So I don't know if you want to give a quick two or three minute history of some of that, Mark, we won't rehash all of it. I'll put links down below of where they can find some of your historic um, you've got a book out, you've got all your historic words are published, but if you want to take just uh, two or three minutes and bring people up to speed if they don't know who you are, it might, might be great to find out your history. Well, I'm a uh, retired lieutenant with the City of Orlando Fire Department, so uh, I'm a third generation firefighter, and uh, when I retired in 2006, uh, you know, I, I had, I won't rehash everything, but people can go back and listen to my testimony and other stuff, uh, but for the new listeners, uh, but I had retired out, and then I had uh, gotten sick for a, a few years and the Lord brought me through all of that. Uh, 2011, I, I seen Donald Trump on, on an interview one time and uh, all of a sudden the Lord started speaking to me saying, you're hearing the voice of a president. I came in here at this very desk, sat down and wrote down the Trump prophecy at that point in 2011. Now, nobody had ever heard of me. Nobody ever knew me uh, at that point. Um, I really didn't share it out a whole lot. Uh, you know, I had a few people that I shared it out with and then, um, you know, 2016, or 15 comes along and everybody was talking about Trump becoming the president or running for president. <clears throat> and I shared it with some people and then it just kind of took off from there. And in the process, yeah. uh, you know, that came to pass. And when that came to pass, uh, probably about a year after it came to pass, we had written a, I'd written a book on it. Um, and all the, some of my prophetic words that were on my website uh, for free, which is swordrescue.com, S O R D rescue.com, people can go there and look at them for free. Uh, and download them for free. They were on my website for free for about a year before I ever put them in the book. So the book was just mostly about my testimony uh, and how it came about. And I just threw the prophetic words in there with it. Um, they ended up doing a movie on the book. Uh, the movie didn't do so hot, but you know, it is what it is, but um, uh, did a movie on the book. And then uh, like I said, I've had other prophetic words since then. Um, people can go to my website and see that. Uh, some of the words uh, are either have come to pass are starting to come to pass. I mean, I still have a few out there that are, that are still in, in, you know, in progress, like anything else, you know, it just, um, that's, that's the one thing I think people, uh, I think get wrong a lot of times in the, in the day and times that we live in, you know, we, we have these things right here and we have, you know, information at our fingertips uh, immediately. And people forget that we still have prophecies in the Bible that haven't come to pass for thousands of years, for 2000 years. And, uh, you know, you get called every name in the book. He called a false prophet. I don't call myself a prophet. Uh, but you get called all kinds of names. Uh, I had one guy, uh, I, I released a prophecy in January, and, and three, what, four months later, he emails me, he says, uh, your prophetic word didn't come to pass, so you're a false prophet. <laughs> and it's like, seriously, you know, I had uh, the Roe versus Wade uh, prophecy that I gave was before Trump got into office, uh, I had prophesied, it was when Scalia died, I gave that prophecy. And so how long, how many years did it take for that prophecy to come to pass? almost six years, six and a half years. Right. So, I mean, it takes time for a prophetic word to come to pass, but because we live in this microwave society, everyone expects it right now. And that's just not the way God works in true prophecy. A lot of times now I'm not saying somebody can't give a prophetic word and it comes to pass, you know, in a week or two, but uh, it, for the most part, if, if God is speaking to a nation, if God is speaking globally in, in the prophetic chances are, it's going to be a years in the process or in the making. And that's where a true prophetic voice, God's going to test the prophetic voice, because when you give a prophetic word, whether people like it or they don't like it or they agree with it or they don't agree with it, is that you as the prophetic voice have to stand on the test of time. 
for that word to come to pass. And it's the attacks. It, it's 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 the uh, verbal abuse. It, it's the social media abuse of today's time now that uh, you know people are coming against you. And then all of a sudden, here it is, six and a half years later, Roe versus Wade comes to pass. And uh, so it, it's 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 not an easy walk. You know what I mean? Uh, but too many people out there, and I'm sure we'll cover some of this here later on in the show, uh, are listening to uh, these false prophets and pastors out there who are just, um, it, it's almost like a, a, a horoscope, a daily horoscope. They're, they're out there, they're, uh, these guys are preying on the congregation of God, uh, God's people, and God's people are falling for it. And they're preying on their fears. They're, uh, when I say pray, I mean P-R-E-Y, you know what I mean? They're, they're pray. And so mm -hmm. uh, they, they go after these people knowing what their fear is, and that's where they target you marketing-wise, because it's a business. They target the people of God, and this is where I've been calling a lot of these people out. Uh, a lot of people get upset with me. A lot of people get angry with me because people just don't want to hear the truth. And uh, but I, I'm a watchman on a wall. I have a rescue mentality as a firefighter. I'm here to rescue people out of that stuff. Uh, you know, they, they, and the problem is, is we prop people up uh, and we turn them into an idol. It's like the golden calf of the prophetic. I, because God told me a long time ago, he said, the prophetic has become the pathetic. I'll say that again. The prophetic has become the pathetic. And yes. this is what God is referring to. And um, so, uh, you know, this is where I think uh, the judgment of God is coming in uh, on the churches, on the prophetic ministries. You know, you know, I'm a big, uh, uh, because the God gave me that word uh, about the 501c3s. All these ministries, probably 98% of them now are 501c3s. Um, so you're, you're seeing all these churches under judgment and I, I can go into, um, uh, some of these new words that I've had since I've been on your show. And, oh yeah. We uh, want to, we want to hear all about that, Mark. Absolutely. Yeah. So the judgment um, has begun basically on a lot of these ministries. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, no, th uh, thank you. I, I, before we got too far away from it, I wanted to mention, you already mentioned your website. It's sword rescue, mm -hmm. S O R D rescue.com. You, you've got all of your prophecies posted up there. They're all for free. Yep. Um, you, you have a book out, you had a movie out, but, but all of this stuff is for free. So, and, and, and you published the Roe versus Wade prophecy. You're right. We covered that very early on when we talked to you. And by the time we were talking to you, it was still several uh, years, years uh, earlier than that too, that you published that. And so you, that was, you, that was I, February 24th, 2016 was, was 2016. that prophecy. Yep. Perfect. So people February. can go, people can go see that yep. it's, it's posted on your website, go read it. And, and we, we covered it live. And so we, I, I remember covering that. And, and uh, at the time, you know, even, even a couple of years ago, it sounded impossible. And certainly right. at the time when you, when you posted that, it sounded, uh, you know, certainly we wanted it to see it happen, but no one ever, I didn't think it was something that could possibly happen. And then sure enough, it did. So right. w w wanted to make sure we covered that and, and you people can go find those, read them all for free. I love that, that you just post them. You're not here trying to make someone sign up to download them or nope. pay a fee to download them. They're all for nope. free. So I wanted to cover that. That's, that's fantastic. And then, you know, we love, we love chatting with you, Mark. And, and I kind of lost track of you for a while. I think the last time you were on was maybe a, a year or two ago. Right. And, and then I, I used to be able to find you online and, and we've all suffered so much censorship and banning and yep. cancel culture. And I, I kind of, I, I would see you uh, on some other shows and then I would see you on the Mac files. And then even, even for a while, I kind of lost track of you over there. And so just, uh, I know one of the biggest questions that I got, I, I told everybody in uh, all of my uh, uh, people in my audience that, that we were going to talk to you. And one of the biggest questions I got back was what's Mark doing now? Where can I find him? So just tell people right yep. up front, where can they find you? What shows are you on? Where do they go? If they want to make sure they're connecting with you and not some, someone that's just re-uploading your stuff. Right. Uh, so I've been blacklisted off of pretty much every show I've ever done, uh, except for the McFiles, uh, uh, Skywatch TV, which is Defender of Publishing, which is my book publisher, uh, and then now yours, of course. But I, I don't do very many shows anymore because I just the I've been doing this for six and a half years. I've been on the front lines and it's just it, it's not easy to do a lot of times. There's times I have to take a break. I have to take a step back of it. But, uh, you know, they can find me on the McFiles uh, Monday night spiritual smackdown sometimes. We're doing some stuff there. I do some stuff on ATKN, uh, um, uh, Kingdom Network, uh, with uh, Jay Bynum, Melissa Leggett, and Dr. Graves. We do some panel stuff sometimes. But they can follow me on Telegram at Patton6966. I know that's, that's not the mark of the beast. That was my <laughs> employee number. I always have to say that. 
uh, on the fire in the fire department. When you're issued a number, you're stuck with that number. I can't change it. So there's a whole story behind that. I'm not going to go into it today. But uh, <laughs> Uh, and then they can follow me on Telegram at Lieutenant Mark Taylor, which they can kind of see that on the screen on my on my uh, video uh, thing there. So, but I mean, uh, I'm just right now. I've been kicked off every platform. I've been off. I've been kicked off of Twitter. I've been kicked off of, of YouTube. Um, so now I'm just trying to. Yeah, I'm just helping people like yourself or you know like ATKN and uh, get their kind of their programs you know going on on Rumble and stuff like that. So uh, I don't do very many interviews, you know, I'm just to a point where it's just like, you know, I, I just, when God gives me something to say, I'll come on and say it. And other than that, forget it, you know? <laughs> well, you know? that's why it's a real pleasure to have you on here. We, we love chatting with you and always love to hear what, what new things you're hearing as well. And I, we're going to get to some of those here in just a minute, but, um, and, and the new ones are all published on your website as well. So people can go there, right. but before, before we get into that, and, and, and I do want to talk about the prophetic. I want to hear your take on it because that's something we cover here on our website and in our channel. And how do you discern the real versus the fake? We're going to talk about that as well. So stay tuned for that. Uh, Mark has some great insight on that. And, and we really want to make sure we're following the right stuff. So before we get into that, though, I one of the things that made me want to have you back on is this horse race that we had recently with the horse called Heavenly Trump. And right. the reason I thought of you is, is you've talked in your prophecies before. It's kind of a funny thing, but... Uh, sometimes God will speak in the prophetic through horse races and through the names that are in these horses. And you right. might think that's silly, but uh, you've had a couple examples of that that you've told us on our show over the years. And yep. then when I saw this latest one, it is just truly, you couldn't make this up if you wanted to. So right. I'm going to go over here. We'll, we'll play it in a second, but I'm going to share my screen and make sure that people can see this because this is really incredible. So there was a horse and it was called Heavenly Trump. That's the name of the horse. Now, who would ever think to name a horse that? But they, but they did. And this was just from this was just from I believe June of 2022. And I should say this interview is August of 2022. So for anybody that's watching this and wondering if it's current or if it's new or re-uploaded, this is August 2022. And this horse race was I believe from June of 2022. Look at the names here. This is just a this is just a screenshot. But this is. You had Moro Flyboy. We'll talk about that in a second. You have Heavenly Trump. You have the Storm, Red Redbird Storm. So you have the Storm. You have Flyboy. You have Trump. You have Noah, which, you know, I mean, come on. I mean, what? <laughs> and then you have the Straw Man. All of these, every single one of these, and you could say you're reading too much into it. I don't think so. You got no. the Flyboy. And what 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 are flies attracted to? Well, they're, attra and they're, they're a very well-known demonic symbol. They're attracted to uh, feces. And, yep. and who had a fly land on him during debates, both Obama and Pence, yep. which is just quite ironic. And I want to get your take in a minute. I'm just, I just want to set the stage and then, you know, we want, people want to hear from you. But then you've got the storm. I don't think any more explanation needs uh, given on that one. You've got Heavenly Trump, which, again, no explanation needed. You've got Noah, which is just a personal favorite of mine. And then you've got the straw man. And what's a straw man? A straw man is someone you put up. Uh, that is the face of something, but really is not running it. Uh, hello, uh, who's who's in who's uh, allegedly sitting in the White House right now? The straw man. So I, I, I before we play the video, I, I'll uh, let you give your comments, and then and then we we have to watch this thing because it's just incredible what actually happens. Yeah. So I mean, uh, you know, God will speak through prophetic events. You know what I mean? Everything you can interpret things. So like just like this horse race, if I'm not mistaken, the one in the lead actually gets ran into the rail and knocked off the horse now That's a right. horse would normally represent authority in the spirit realm so whoever's on the horse which to me represents probably biden at this point is way out in front or whatever the case would be he gets knocked off of his authority he knocked off the horse the horse bucks him off so and then heavenly trump comes in for the win so will trump come in from behind because it's looking like they're they're about to indict trump uh could he be arrested i have no clue god has not shown me anything but i wouldn't put it past him trying to arrest him uh, but if he is indicted, don't panic because it's, to me, it's setting precedent precedent for uh, going back and indicting previous presidents, including Biden, uh, Clinton, Obama, uh, all this stuff. So uh, wow. you know, we just have to sit back and, and watch how this thing plays out. But this this was definitely a prophetic event, brother, because Trump came <laughs> in from behind and, and takes the win. So you can't make it up. <laughs> So look, look at this photo. This is a still shot of right before the end of the race. So this is the coming, I don't know right. horse racing that well, but this is the final stretch. And yep. and this out in front here, this is the leader. And the leader just happens to be Flyboy. So again, Pence or Obama, 
who's seems yep. to be in the lead right now, who's pulling the strings, who's running the J6 committee, who's doing all this stuff. Right. Is it yep. the shadow puppet? It's not the straw man. Notice the straw man's nowhere to be seen, but yep. it's the fly boy. And he's right out there. And then you're going to see in this video, the horse bucks him off right into the rail. Yep. I've never seen anything like it. I haven't seen a lot of horse racing, but I've never seen anything like this. And then you'll, you're going to see Heavenly Trump come up from, from the side. So we'll take a look at it here. And I, I, I went, we covered this in an article a couple of weeks ago. And I thought this was incredible, Mark. I thought I would just go to this right now and see the, where it says this. Watch the video here. Backup video here. They're all gone. I didn't delete these. Uh, the videos are just completely gone from our article. I have wow. no idea what happened. Look at that. I haven't, I haven't looked at this article in two weeks since we posted it. They are completely gone. Uh, that's amazing. I, I put a backup here on rumble so we can watch it here on rumble, I think, but wow. So, all right. Uh, this should have sound on it. Let's it's only 18 seconds. Let's watch it together and see what happens. Fly boy have absolutely opened up on them inside the furlong pole. He might lead it by double digits. Heavenly Trump is going to be second. No, oh, and Morrow Flyboy ducked in, hit the rail, and unseated the rider. And Heavenly Trump is going to inherit the win here. Look at now, that! Now, did you hear? Incredible. Did you hear what the commentator said? Oh, he said, "Tell us." He said, unseated the rider. <laughs> unseated. Wow. So, to wow. me, I, 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 I like your observation about the Flyboy. I, I really do. That I, I think. See, this is what's what's cool about the prophetic is that you can have multiple layers of revelation in one thing and so uh but it, whoever it is gets unseated whoever it is so it, it could be wow. biden it could be pence it could be obama whoever's holding uh that authority basically right there it gets unseated that's what i like about that that is fantastic well i we just had to have you on you're you're confirming it absolutely is prophetic when i saw oh, yeah. the, the horse we, we we had to get your take on it and yep that is so good. I'm going to stop the share here. Okay. One other thing, Mark, right after that, uh, we also covered it and many other people did too, but there have been a string of lightning strikes. There are a couple in DC. Oh, yeah. And I, I think you have some thoughts on those. If you, we'd love to hear what, what you think of those, what prophetic implications bit, because it's, you know, lightning strikes, that's normal, but right. there were several right in a row and, and a couple pretty big ones. So go ahead. What, what do you see there? Well, what I see happening right there is, you know, uh, to me, it's it's God's judgment basically coming against the New World Order. Uh, we all know the Washington Monument has been hit multiple times. Uh, you know, even had an earthquake damage that, and that, quite frankly, that happened right around the time of the Trump prophecy in 2011, where it actually took physical damage and they closed it. So mm. that monument, at some point, to me, is going to come down. Uh, we just had the new, uh, the um, uh, Georgia Guidestones just got taken down, yes. and now notice how they it kind of looked like a lightning strike, but it, it was it was explosive. They said right, so but then within twenty, not even twenty four hours, Harley, the Georgia Guidestones came in and they demolished them. The point is, yes, it was did. taken down. I think there's a list out there flying around of like thirty something sites, uh, demonic sites, uh, and they're they're checking them off as they come down. Uh, keep wow. an eye on the Three Gorges Dam. Keep an eye on the Hoover Dam. And if you have never researched the Hoover Dam, uh, be prepared because it's dark, folks. It is hmm. very dark. And I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole right now because we just don't have enough time. So uh, the, the Hoover Dam, uh, you, you've got, uh, uh, of course, the Washington Monument. You've you got tons of sites out there. Um, the Vatican, because, uh, you know, you, you've got stuff like those, um, uh, the Washington Monument, uh, which is a phallic symbol to Baal. you got those all over the place. So even there's one at the Vatican. So keep an eye out. God is, is, is showing through signs and wonders right now. Uh, uh, through this stuff, and I think it's all on the New World Order right now. I really do, because New World Order is going down, period. Oh, that's that's great. Yeah, some of those I didn't know about. I made some notes here to look into those. The Georgia Guidestones were huge. They changed the yep. story at least three times as to what <laughs> happened there. It was an explosive, it was lightning, it was something right. else, and I, I don't think there's been an official determination, which makes you wonder, you know, maybe it was God just knocking those down. Who knows? Well, either way, uh, really either incredible. way, it was a prophetic sign. It doesn't matter what took it down. It was a prophetic sign, just like the race. It doesn't matter what how the rider got knocked off. He was unseated. We don't care <laughs> prophetically. It just happened. You know what I mean? It was it was still a prophetic thing or occurrence that God is speaking through right now. So that's why I tell people, you know, if if you can't discern what God is saying, read the signs right now. Yeah, that's great. Well, what another question that that comes up most often for you is you you were very 
speaking of your old prophecies and your new ones, and we're gonna we're gonna get into the new ones here in just a minute, and this might lead us into them. But you you were very adamant that Trump would serve a second term. You were on right. record, and and we we love that you don't back off of those things. It's not like you've said, well, that was misinterpreted, or you have to understand the nuances. Right. You you you've stuck by it, and and everyone wants to know: Are you still standing by that? Do you still see a second term coming? Yep. It, what what do you go ahead? Doors wide yep. open. Tell us yep. what you see for a second term for Trump. I, I think Trump's coming back. I uh, whether it's you know before 2024, uh, something's got to happen before 2024 because we can't stay on the path that we're on right now because every day is accelerating, and especially now that he got uh, raided at Mar-a-Lago. To me, that was the the pin and the grenade they pulled. The spoons in midair. We're just waiting for this grenade to, to basically blow at this point, uh, because mm. if you'll notice, since Mayor Lago now, things are accelerating very rapidly because Trump mentioned some things that he's never mentioned before in his rallies. He mentioned tunnels. Yeah, uh, he, he mentioned satanic ritual abuse. And then what was the third was a third thing he, he mentioned uh, that he's never mentioned before at um, uh, when he was at CPAC. Oh, that the Patriots were uh, the people weren't going to take it anymore. Mm. Period. And see, I gave a prophetic warning a long time ago, about eight months before Trump left office. I gave a prophetic warning that the Lord was showing me that this this timeline that we're in, this prophetic timeline, that if they act too early, like the White Hats, if they act too early, then it could be disastrous because we could lose, you know, uh, we don't want them walking on a technicality. Things have to be done correctly. But if they waited too late, that the patriots would take matters into their own hands and they would go after these people and we'd be on the brink of civil war, basically. Mm -hmm. because i think you and, i think you said that on our show i remember that yep yep and so uh the problem is this not everybody follows uh our intelligence friends uh with the alphabet 17th letter <laughs> alphabet not everybody not everybody follows the plan okay not everybody believes that exists and so when you look at probably 20 percent of the hardcore patriots that were out here like ourselves on the front lines we believe there's a plan we believe in the in, the, in that agent and whoever that is and so uh but the point is is that the ones you have to worry about is not us it's the ones who aren't following the plan. And those are the ones that when if, if, if they arrest Trump, this is going to get really dicey. If they arrest him or indict him, this is going to get bad. This is going to come close uh, because the Patriots are going to they look at President Trump as their commander in chief. They don't look at mm -hmm. Biden as commander in chief. So all they're going to see now is that he's been raided. He's been indicted. He's been attacked. He's been uh, tried to been impeached how many times. So they're looking at this. And this is why Trump warned the other day the people aren't going to take it anymore. And this is the problem that we're going to run into here. This is going to get really, really razor thin, I think, if we're not careful. Because if they indict him or arrest him, it's game on at that point. We're, they're going to have to be really be careful at that point. So this is why I think things are going to accelerate very quickly from this point on. So they've got to do something before 2024. Now, does he come back before 2024? I don't know. Did he win 2020? Yes, he did. He won 2020. Yep. We all know that, period. So Honestly, he should be in a second term right now. Not that that's an excuse, but I'm saying he, they've got to do something before 2024 because we cannot stay on the same track as a country like we're doing right now because this is going to come to civil war if we're not careful. Uh, you know, um, because people are not going to sit here and watch 87,000 IRS army come around and start knocking on people's doors because they're inciting a civil war. They're going to, uh, ATF, you see, is coming around to people knocking on people's doors. They're going to knock on the wrong doors at some point. And because the people are going to put up with it, especially if they indict or arrest him. And they know that. The problem is, brother, is where do we as patriots say we draw the line? Where do we say, okay, I don't want to get sucked into this civil war prematurely? You know what I mean? Uh, we don't want a civil yes. war period. We don't want a war period because we would never recover from it from this country. There would be so much bloodshed, we'd never recover from it. So I don't ever want to see that. But where does the where do the Patriots draw the line? Because I've had people ask me that. Where do we draw the line and say, okay, if they're knocking on our doors or if they're doing this, that, and the other, or they're coming across the border like they're doing uh, and they turn on us, what are we supposed to do? Well, you do what needs to be done at that point. You know, this is why we have the Constitution. This is why we have the Second Amendment. You defend you and your family, period. But do we get lured into the trap of a civil war by the deep state, which is what they're trying to do right now? And the answer would be no. We need to be very wise about this how we how we handle things right now so right now the biggest weapon we have right now other than prayer would be uh get out and vote in 2024 i mean i'm sorry in 2022 here in, in the midterms we've got what how many days do we have left before the midterms less than is it less than 90? 90 less than 90 yes. yeah less than 90 so this is going to be the biggest weapon we have and i, and I know what people are saying oh i don't want to you know the machines and i said guys we just got to overwhelm it right now we see the wins that are happening with people that Trump is endorsing right now. We've got to get out and vote. We've got to do our part. We have to get out and vote, period. 
Now, uh, Trump said something, and I'll cover this real quick because I, I don't know you want to move on. Trump said something a long time ago, and I'm just going to point this out. In, a, in an interview years ago, he said, I would like to lose everything just for a short period of time mm. to see who is loyal to me. He did say that, didn't he? I remember that. Now, that's going to be very interesting because if they indict or arrest him, he's kind of lost everything in people's mm. eyes. He hasn't really mm. lost everything, but in some people's eyes, he's lost, all, he's lost it all. Wow. And it's going to be very interesting to see who steps up and tries to run when he's down. <laughs> wow. Watch, so watch that. Watch that. Because that's going to be a red flag. Because the sharks are going to be circling the water, basically, at that point. Wow. I love that. That's that's so good. I, I hadn't thought about it that way. That's that's really true. That's that's how we have love having you on. Well, Mark, going back to one of the things you just said, I want to make sure we're clear about this. You you said we don't want to get sucked into no, something. We don't, we don't want don't. to get baited. We don't want to get incited into something. And yep. and that's something we're very clear about as well. There's you know there's there's standing up for yourself. There's self defense. There's defending right. the constitution. Right. But but we're, there's it's not a call for violence. It's not a call no. for going out and taking it into your own hands. No. And and there's a way to protest in, in a way that's right. that's that's and, the and right way give, to do it. And let me give one more example here. Of what's going on? What I see happening right now? I'm seeing some calms by false pastors and false prophets right now. Mm. And I'm going to call it out. There's some mm. calms going on on social media right now where they're calling for rising up. They're calling for, uh, you know, uh, not quite sure about the civil disobedience part, but there's some stuff out there flying around. And all of this, guys, I want to warn people, this IRS army that they've got, what people don't understand about the 501c3 church. This is what I see the enemy doing right now. They signed their soul to the devil himself, to, to the bail system, which is the 501c3, these churches have, these, these false prophets and ministries, prophetic ministries. And what they're trying to do now and what they're going to do is they're going to make it look like that this is an enemy attack on Christianity or the church, per se, when the fact of the matter is they are the ones that sold their rights to the IRS to begin with because the IRS is their head. Jesus is not the head of their church, their ministry. Hmm. Baal is. Hmm. So what are they going to do? I'm seeing comms now where they're trying to stir the people up. And I'm not, I'm not listen, I'm all for, I don't have a problem defending my country. I, I don't have a problem with it at all. But what I'm not going to do is get lured into a false war, if you will, for the from the deep state church, because they're trying to tell the people we're being attacked. They're trying to kill the churches. They're, you know, they're doing this, that, and the other. And all the while is, you don't understand, you sold your soul to the devil for that tax-exempt status. You answered to the IRS. You, you gave your rights over to the IRS at this point. So if they come knocking on the 501c3 church's door, they have to answer to that. Mm. You, you see my point? So yes. these guys are trying to stir the pot. And so don't get lured into this. Take a step back when you hear this stuff. And if again, if you cannot discern, read the signs of what God is saying right now, because these guys are going to try, they're going to try and launch it through the churches as well. So don't be surprised about that. And so they're going to make it look like they're coming for the churches and are attacking. Well, they are. But it's the judgment of God, because God's hand of protection has come off the church, off the 501c3s. They are no longer under God's protection because of that 501c3. God's given them enough time to repent. He's given them enough time to come out of it. They haven't done it. They have refused because they're too, they're too uh, uh, into the money, into the glory, into all these things that God says not to do. And I don't have a problem with money. It's how you make your money. Okay, If you have a legitimate business, that's different. But ministry is not a business. And what they have done is that we don't have pastors. We have CEOs in the pulpit. And they've turned it into a business. They've sold their soul to the devil. The devil is now coming back for his dues, which is the churches under the 501c3. So don't get lured into a civil war or a false narrative like they're trying to push right now, uh, saying that uh, you know we're, uh, they're trying to shut down Christianity. No, folks. This is the judgment of God on the churches. Okay. There you go. You heard it here first. Mark, That's there's, there's two things that I hear you talking about, and we had a conversation off air before we, before we started this. And I don't want to name any names, but I, you're talking. You talk about the 501c3s. That's the structure. That's that's some yep. of the churches that have that have done this. There's also a lot of people online that um, that have claim to have prophetic words, and and oh, some yeah. of the stuff maybe just doesn't always sit right with you. Maybe it feels kind of off. Again, we're not going to name any names. I don't want to do right. that, but I I do want to. You know, you get prophetic words, and and right. and you've posted those. How do we? 
discern what's real, what's not? How do we discern what we should be listening to or following and not following? Um, and, and maybe even a broader topic. Then, then you get the people that says there's absolutely no prophetic today. And that all right. ended with the apostles. Right. Take a few minutes and, and, and tell us, is the prophetic active today? And if it is, how do we know it's, it's authentic? The, the prophetic is active today, but the, the amount of true prophetic voices are, are getting slimmer and slimmer, honestly, uh, be, because people are getting wrapped up into the, into the money issue. Uh, you're seeing it in these patriotic tours. You're seeing it in the prophetic. Notice that all of a sudden here in the, in the in, well, let me, let me back up here. When I started my, my ministry, I said from day, almost from day one, that the spiritual will parallel the political exposures, right? So we're seeing whatever you see happening in the political, always look to the spiritual side on the religious side because it's happening there. You just may not be hearing about it. So when, when, when uh, uh, you see something happening with Trump, chances are it's happening over here in the churches. So it's because we, they can't control the people anymore through politics because people have opened their eyes. They've awakened to the politics. They can't control the people through politics. Now what they've done is they've switched to religion. So now they're, they're throwing the false prophets out front because what they're doing is some of them are being told what to say. Some of them get their uh, uh, so-called prophetic words from military uh, intel, from those who have military intel contacts. And so they'll say, well, watch this or watch that. What is that? That's not a prophetic word. There's no details in that. It's just simply, and then the next headline is, uh, you know, let's, let's, let's watch the state of, of Georgia. What about Georgia? The next headline that comes out, and then they claim, oh, it came to pass uh, two weeks later. So when you see these kinds of things, it's easy to look in the headlines and to try to predict something two weeks in advance or a few days in advance. What Again, I go back to what I said in the beginning of the show. When it's, it's when a true prophetic word, you have to stand on the test of time for years, and then it comes to pass. That's the way God works a lot of, most of the time. But when you're speaking on a national level, it, it's just this, this, this garbage of a daily horoscope, this garbage of someone uh, looking at the headlines and predicting something two weeks from now, no, guys, uh, you know, this is how high level psychics work. You know what I mean? So this is where we have to discern, number one, and then number two, uh, search a matter out. You know, God's giving signs all the time. Uh, there's, there's people out there who are channeling, who are automatic writing. They call it the anointing. It is not the anointing. God does not work like that. That is an occult practice, period. If someone says, I don't remember what I wrote, and they say, I'm so heavy, I don't remember what I wrote. I had to wait till I was done, and then I had to come back, and I had to reread it. That's not how God works. Every one of these prophecies that God has given me that I have written down, I remember what I write. That is called automatic writing. When a demon comes in or a power of principality, they take over, and they take over your hand, and you don't know what's being written. And it's when you come back into your body and you get your faculties back, you go back and you have to reread it. That is an occult mm. practice. That is high-level psychic witchcraft, folks. And this is the stuff that people are buying as prophetic. And this is what grieves me, and I think it's definitely grieving the Lord. How many people are following these false prophets? Is a, is a false prophet out there, is he prophesying in front of a 3D pyramid? You know, is there a pyramid in the background? Read the, some, read the signs. If you can't discern, read the signs. God is giving signs everywhere. Guys, they're no longer hiding it now. They're coming out of the woodwork. They're coming out of their shells, these Luciferians and Satanists. Don't think for one second that this is not a, a, a plot and a plan by the enemy to infiltrate the prophetic, the, the churches, all of these things, because they know that the prophet, prophets, these false prophets, P-R-O-F-I-T-S, these prophets, if you will, are the leaders now and to lead people astray. That's the only way. So what's happening is they can't control by politics. They're going to control them through religion, using the false prophets to steer the people in a certain direction prophetically by what they speak. Does this make sense? Yeah, so it's good. This is what they're doing. So now, especially with some of these patriotic conferences, so uh, when you got these guys out here, they're out there, you walk into these conferences, they call it a revival, but yet they got merchandise everywhere. They're merchandising. What did Jesus do when he walked into the temple with the merchandisers? Yeah. Right. He, he made a whip and drove them out, and they want to call it a revival. This is where God's heart is grieved, brother, uh, over this stuff. This is not what it was meant to be. And so, uh, you know, uh, the, the true ecclesia, the true, true uh, uh, congregation, not church, the church, the congregation of God is going to be those who are outside of the four walls. That's going to be your revival out on the streets, the highways, the byways, the fields. It's not meant to go in there and make these millions of dollars and so that they can have the next Lamborghini or they can have the next me mega yacht, you know, uh, or, or whatever the case may be. Pay attention to the signs. Now, there is a group that I'll point people to called SIU on Telegram. 
who's exposing a lot of these frauds, and they're backing it up with the facts. And now here's what you have going on right now. And I'm going to cover this, and, and people can get aggravated with me all they want to. Your favorite pastor or your favorite prophet, let's say, I don't want anyone to ever prop me up as, as their idol or this, that, and the other. Please don't do that to me. I, 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 don't, I tell people, don't believe everything I say. You take it before the Lord, and you test it before the Lord. You That's good. You discern things by what God tells you. You don't answer to me. I'm simply a spokesperson for what the Lord says sometimes. So when I speak something, you take it before the Lord, and you ask the Lord, is this, is this true? And if it is, it's up to you. I, I cannot violate your will. God won't violate your will, so what gives me the right to? I don't tell people, oh, come on, guys, you got to believe me, man. No, it's not like that. It's like, look, you have your own free will. But the point is, you, you take it before the Lord, you ask the Lord, and if you can't get anything from the Lord, read the signs. Because I'm telling you, the signs out there, brother, right now, they're everywhere. They're no longer hiding it. You're seeing pentagrams. You're seeing pyramids, which is Illuminati symbolism. Most of these mega pastors are Illuminati. So, and people take an offense. What happens is, is we'll expose somebody to say on a program, because I, I have called people out by name on a program, and then people get ma mad at me because that was their idol. That's who they propped up as their favorite prophet or their favorite pastor. And the problem is, is that they get mad at the messenger when they haven't even taken the time to search a matter out. I encourage people, you need to start digging on these pastors and these prophets because they're most of them are false right now. And look, let me explain something. Ask yourself a couple of questions. The first question is, are they a 501c3? If they are, they're already false. And most people are going to say, oh my God, did he just say that? Yes. And here's the reason why. They may not even know that they're a part of a demonic system, that they sold their soul, basically, for that tax-exempt tax status. It's, it's not so much, even though they may be a good man or a woman of God, let's say, and this is why I've been trying to rescue people, but they don't want to hear it because they, it's all about the money. But when you go in there and you say, okay, they're a false prophet because they're part of the bail system. It's the amount of uh, uh, demonic that's on them, if you will. It's, it's the amount of that that's on them. Uh, I'm, I'm missing a word here. Help me out here, Lord. It, it, it's, <laughs> it's what's on them that makes them false, okay? That, that's through the 501c3. They may not even be corrupt. But it's the amount of that that's on them through that system. They're automatically irrelevant at that point. They have to come out of it. They have to repent. They've got to divorce bail and remarry God at that point, which we've all had to do because we've all been a part of the system, all of us. If you've walked into a church, been a member of a church, you've been a part of the bail system. There's no way around it. So we, 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 we've all had to come out, repent, divorce bail, remarry God, and that's what's got to take place. So uh, ask yourself, are they 501c3 first? The second thing is, is what they're prophesying, does it line up with the word of God? Third thing, discern or take it before the Lord and discern. If you're not hearing anything, fourth thing, read the signs, period. That's, what I, that's, that's the way I like to tell people right now because the 501c3 as it is, is that 98% of the churches and ministries right now are through the 501c3. Are you seeing these pyramids in the background on our stages? Are you seeing uh, the all-seeing eye somewhere? Are all these different little things that you can look for? But I encourage people, before you go on the attack, have you done your due diligence to search that matter out before you start defending that individual? Because what you're defending may just be a golden calf. Yeah, Mark, that's good. You, you know, President Trump talked when he was in office the first time about maybe getting rid of the 501c3 status. And that was one thing that confused a lot of people. He, he right. threw it out there once and he, he didn't follow up on it too much. But he threw it out there, I think, to test the waters and see how people would respond. And it yeah. confused most people. But he's, right. he was talking about what you're talking about. It would actually be liberating in the sense that you wouldn't feel like you had to censor what you said in your messages from in your in your preaching and all that type of stuff. And he's a wise President Trump has a lot of wisdom and, and insight right. uh, for a guy that they think is just a bull in a china shop. He's oftentimes way out ahead of what everyone else is paying attention to. Right. Absolutely. So it's it's one of those things where, you know, um, if he did take away the 501c3, most of the pastors would probably be extremely upset at him because this is how they're making their money through that tax exempt status. When actually he'd be doing them a favor because he'd be yanking them out of the bail system at that point. You see, the, the whole thing is, is who's the head of the church? It's not Jesus Christ. 
you know, when Jesus talked about, you know, the foxes have dens and uh, nests, and, and, but the Son of Man has nowhere to, to lay his head. That's what he was talking mm-hmm. about. He has nowhere to rest his head. He is the headship of God's people. He has no place to rest his authority, his headship, because where's the body? The body's over here under Baal, not under Jesus. That's the problem. Right. God, right. See, he's, he's looking for a pure, spotless bride without corruption, without any of that. And Baal is not it. So if you want to know why the world is burning, if you want to know why America is burning, why we're in this predicament, look to the church because they're the ones that are at fault for this. They're the ones because they have not done – because you can't cast out Satan with Satan. When you're in, in covenant with Baal through the 501c3, you don't have – and Baal's a strong man over America. You don't have the power and authority to get rid of him. But the first thing that had to come down to get rid of Baal as a strong man was the blood sacrifice to Baal, which was the abortion, which was Roe versus Wade. Now that that's down, notice this now. Since Roe versus Wade came down, the lightning strikes. Mm-hmm. All this happened after Roe versus Wade came down. And I have been saying this that Roe versus Wade it would probably have to come down first because Baal is a violent entity. He feeds off the blood of the innocent. So he was, that was his food source, was the abortion. Now that that's gone on a federal level, it's going to get kicked to the states now. And this is where you'll see the blessings of the curses on the states as to who keeps it, who, who, who gets rid of it. So uh, now that that's been taken down uh, with Baal, now Baal himself can be taken as the strong man and can be taken down. Oh, that's good, Mark. You, you said something that's so true. You said a lot of these uh, prophets out there, people put them up on pedestals and, and make them the yep. golden calf. And, yep. and we experienced that. There was, and, and I'm not going to name the name. It's all, we've, we've covered it on our website many times. It's out there. You can find it. For purposes of this interview, I'm not going to name the name, but there there was one of those that we stopped covering because I, I there there was stuff that I was seeing that was just not right, and it wasn't small stuff either. It was it was really serious, and right. we've documented it all. All the videos are out there; you can go see it. But the minute I did that, I got violent. Now a lot of people supported it, and they said right. they 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 appreciate they saw it. Uh, they read they read the signs. They they agreed exactly with me, but. Uh, I got a lot of pushback, just violent stuff, irrational stuff. Yep. And and I would say, but have you seen this video? How do you explain away this video? How do you those are the religious spirits video? coming about? Those are the religious yes. spirits that that are that are coming out. They're vile, brother. They, they're it, they're it vile. Really they're violent. Uh, they're they're this this is the part where before before they attacked you and your report, did they do their due diligence to search the matter out, and did they, they take it before the Lord? It. No, they refuse to even watch it. They wouldn't see, even look that, at it. That's my, that's my point. So this is what people are doing now. They want to shoot the messenger, but they haven't discerned or they haven't done their due diligence to search the matter out like God tells us to. But they just want to automatically go on the attack, and they want to, they want to, to protect that golden calf. Yeah, the, well, we experienced it firsthand, and it was the right decision to, to stop covering that individual yeah. and and it's, it's good for you proven it it's proven it over time but it's good to hear you talk about that i hope that helps people your general explanation of, of because it's kind of, it's kind of funny you, we've got you know you've got prophetic words and and you're not saying all prophetic words should not be trusted but how how do you test them out and one of the big things i, I heard you saying was you stand on it over time and it doesn't necessarily right. come about next week or next month that's right we've already talked We've already talked about the big one that you are still standing behind is that Trump gets a second term in office. Yep. One of the other ones that I, I still have circled on my list from you is, is I, I think, and you can, you can give me the exact details, but I think at one time you had five Supreme Court justices or even six being replaced. Right. I think we've had three. Yep. And so do you still have a couple more on the chopping block? Uh, you know, God said, he gave me, he said three the first time. And I think, you know, God gives everyone a chance to repent. And I think there was a couple of judges on that on that bench at the time when God gave me that, when he told me three, that he was trying to give them a chance to repent. And then he came back later on. He said, no, now it's going to be five. I think that time of repentance had come and gone. So which tells me that basically Trump's got to get in for a second term because he's probably got two more Supreme Court justices to go. So who knows? Uh, <laughs> you know, um, he's gotten three. And so God reformed the court enough to where Roe versus Wade could be taken, because, again, you there's no way we could battle this in the spirit realm with Baal being the strong man as long as the abortion was still there. There's just, there's, there was, there's no way because the food source for Baal and the empowerment there through the sacrifices of the abortions uh, was just too, too strong, too great. So that had to be taken first. So now that that's gone, everything else will start to fall like dominoes. Oh, that's that's great. OK, so those are the two. And, and I'm hearing you say they go possibly hand in hand. Trump's return and, and the Supreme Court is not done yet. So two big things to watch for. 
Uh, Mark well, even, even, even me as a prophetic voice, I don't, I don't know the details of sometimes of how this stuff's going to come to pass, because even the way as the prophetic voice that God speaks through me, I can think it's going to come up about one way, because again, we rehearse this movie in our head thinking it's going to happen a certain way, when in fact, God goes, nope, this is the way it's going to happen. And then we don't know <laughs> until it actually comes to pass. So oh, that's very good. And, and if it was so easy to figure out, then the enemy would figure it out. That's right. It. So that's, that's right. That's absolutely. Well, we, we've got a couple minutes left. And, and I, I, cannot let you go without uh or visiting some of your new your new words at least new since okay. the last time we had you on i'd love i'll just open it up to you anything that you have okay. new that you're that you'd like to share I, everybody yep. would love to hear it absolutely so i wrote this one on january 7th 2021 it's called wolves and sheep's clothing and it goes along with what we've been talking about uh it said the spirit of god says the clash between the spirit of elijah and the prophets of baal is coming to a crescendo there is high-level psychics masquerading as prophets and prophetesses designed to infiltrate and discredit the true prophetic and ecclesia, leading God's people astray. Not everyone that comes in my name is from me. Not everyone that comes in my name is of me. Why do you so blindly and quickly accept anyone coming in my name? Why don't you test the spirits? Not everyone that speaks prophecies, dreams, and visions are from me. Remember Jeremiah 33, guys. They seduce you with your with their fancy words. They mesmerize you with their dreams and visions that are not from me. The Spirit of God says the prophets and priests that have prophesied by Baal, committed adultery with Jezebel, prophesied dreams and visions from their own heart, repent. You build your kingdoms to bring glory to yourselves versus bringing glory to me. You allow my little ones to be sacrificed on the altars of Moloch and Baal for the sake of mammon. You walk around your man-made kingdoms with your fancy titles and names that mock me, being served like kings, all while my little ones suffer. Did I not say in my word, Exodus 23, 5, when you take a bribe, which is the 501c3, it blinds the eyes of the wise and perverts the words of the righteous. Did I not say in my word, Deuteronomy 27, 25, cursed is he who takes a bribe for the slaying of an innocent person. You took a bribe, getting rich from the blood of the money of my little ones that, to remain silent. That's the abortion. Uh, so when he's talking about the bribe here, so even the Pharisees knew not to touch that money from Judas, you vipers, you prophets and priests refuse to speak truth and stand on my words and the words I give you because you fear man more than the living God, you cowards. Therefore, you have one way out of this and one way only give all your money and your assets away. Matthew 19, 16 through 30. You have made under the bail system, divorce bail, remarry me, repent and follow me. The Spirit of God says another betrayal from the President's Spiritual Advisory Board has taken place. Jezebel whispers, it's complete. We have the king's ear. I control who speaks to the king. No true prophet of the living God will ever reach him. Only my soothsayers will speak. The betrayer sits at the king's table. The Spirit of God says the time has come to hold all enemies of the living God, creator of heaven and earth, accountable for their atrocities against mankind. Repentance will save your soul, but there will be no mercy in the justice that is here now. Repent. Now, let me explain this real quick, uh, because I know we got a little time left here. These prophets and priests, like we've been talking about, that God's addressing here, a lot of this, study Jeremiah uh, uh, 23, guys. So when you look at this, they have been making their money off the blood of the babies, off the blood of the innocent. So therefore, the church is under a curse. The 501c3 is under a curse. Cursed is he who takes a bribe for the slaying of the innocent. The 501c3 was a bribe to, to keep your mouth shut for in return for a tax return or tax uh, exempt status. Okay. And then uh, the other thing is you see these patriotic conferences, everybody's seen the whiteboard that they always, always show. And Trump's got the picture in the middle of him. And you got all these different pictures, with all these arrows. There is a spiritual coup that is taking place to get the King's ear. This is all about mm. getting the King's ear. They want high level psychics. They want warlocks. They want witches next to the King because they know they can't control the King. So uh, politically, how are they going to control the King and the people? Like we talked about earlier, they're going to control the king through witchcraft or to get mm. people around him who are high level witchcraft. Uh, this is why even they are calling for the removal of Trump's spiritual advisory board, because they're trying to remove a lower level of evil and replace it with a higher level of evil, if that makes sense. Mm. So that's what this prophecy is talking about and warning about right now. So that's just the spiritual coup that is taking place against Trump and his family right now. Wow, that is so dead on. And that was from 2001 or I'm sorry, 2021. January 7th, 2021. Uh, the next one is uh, January 28th, 2022 of this year. It says judgment has begun. The spirit of God says many false prophets and pastors are prophesying judgment in 2022. Do you not realize they are prophesying their own doom? The very mm -hmm. things they are prophesying, they are guilty of. 
The sins of these false pastors and prophets are great. The bowls of sin are overflowing for these corrupt leaders who have been fornicating with the whore of Babylon long enough. The sand has run out of the hourglass, and my judgment has begun for those that are drunk from her wine, the blood of the saints, and my true prophets. You got to remember, we have five senses in the natural. We have five spiritual senses. Why can't people discern? Why can't they use their spiritual senses? Because they're part of the system. They're drunk. What happens when you're mm. literally drunk? You lose your senses. You can't taste, touch, smell, react, anything. Same thing happens in the spirit. When you are drunk off the, off the blood of the prophets and, the, and her wine, which is the whore of Babylon, you lose your spiritual senses. Okay? Mm. So uh, right. those, those that have enjoyed her delicacies have truly received their reward. I will pour out my judgment on everything that is corrupt. I will start at the top of their pyramid the leadership that has led my people astray. The infiltration from the enemy is catastrophic. Everything has been mm -hmm. infiltrated and corrupted. Seminaries, churches, and the people that have been led astray. The wickedness of these false prophets and pastors have become a stench unto my nostrils. They have turned my houses of worship into a marketplace and a den of money-changing thieves. You vipers, I paid the ultimate price on the cross for all of humanity through my pain, suffering, and shed blood. Did I charge money for that? No. Woe, woe, woe to you money-changing vipers. I already paid the price, so my gospel is free. My gospel was never to be prostituted for money, big fancy homes, and cars. Repent. The Spirit of God says the deep state church is plotting and planning in their secret chambers. They are trying to prevent their coming exposure of their great deception of death against the people in the Illuminati equation. Why are you blindly following these corrupt leaders who seek glory from man and do not give glory to me? Why are you not using discernment? You have no discernment or spiritual senses because you are drunk from the enemy's wine, for they plot and plan against you with their next money and influence scheme, all while making you a slave to them, their system, and their old religious order. I, the Lord God, came to set the captives free through relationship, not religion, to free the oppressed and to give you your sovereignty back. Through their schemes, they are assisting in ushering in the new world order, the Antichrist spirit, and a one world religion under the guise of unity, and it will be a false unity under the enemy's triune they have mm -hmm. uh, or you have turned these leaders into idols before me you support their corruption and further their demonic plans therefore you are complicit in their wickedness repent the spirit of god says the system the system i the lord god will crash the religious system that so many for thousands of years have tried to protect i have sent many warnings to come out of her by many of my servants my true prophets only to have them ignored attacked harmed or murdered their innocent mm -hmm. blood cries out to me and i will avenge them do you not realize that under the system, the 501c3, you are under a curse? You took a bribe for the slaying of my innocent, my little ones. You have denied my kingdom for the enemies. Now my judgment is on the religious system and its leaders. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of my throne. They are trying to protect the old religious order, but I, the Lord God, shall expose it and destroy it. This is a Sodom and Gomorrah moment. Come out of her, come out of her now, and my judgment has begun, for my judgment has begun. Do not look back as Lot's wife did, for I will destroy the very system the apostate church has become and fornicated with. So as it was for Sodom and Gomorrah, so shall it be for the whore and the old religious order that has fornicated and protected her and led my people astray. Some churches, ministries, lodges, orders, and their man-made kingdoms will burn to the ground. I'll go into that in a minute. Others will go bankrupt. Some leaders will be removed from the face of the earth. I believe some are going to start dropping dead, brother. Mm. Why aren't they listening? Because pride has handed them over to a reprobate mind. Being handed over to a reprobate mind is part of the judgment. Their arrogance knows no bounds. Repentance will save your soul, but it will not stop my justice from being served. Some will say this is an attack on Christianity. No, this is my judgment on the corrupt system that man put in place, not I, the Lord God. The Spirit of God says, read the signs, read the signs. The false prophets are no longer hiding their true intentions. For the clash between the spirit of Elijah and the prophets of Baal is at the, are at the crescendo. They will call on their God. My true prophets will call on theirs, and you shall see who the one true God is. Their God is Baal, Moloch, and Mammon. But I, the Lord God, will show myself strong and mighty, and the spirit of the fear of the Lord shall fall on the people. The spirit of God says, woe, woe, woe to you false prophets and pastors that have led my people astray. Do you think I do not see what you do in your inner chambers, abusing and sacrificing my little ones? Do you think I don't see it all? Woe to you hypocrites, for you are whitewashed tombs. It would be better for you to have a millstone hung around your neck and cast into the sea. Woe, woe, woe to you false prophets and pastors that are witches and warlocks, calling down death curses on my true pastors and prophets. Therefore, if you do not repent and you take one of mine, I will take a hundred of yours. You take a hundred of mine, I will take a thousand of yours. Repent. That's Exodus twenty-two eighteen. 
The Spirit of God says, do not fear my people when you see these things, for they must come to pass. pass. I will split the old religious order wide open for all to see the lies that have been perpetuated against all of humanity and my people. Then the lost books and scrolls shall be opened, and my truth shall be set free. I will establish my kingdom on the earth with my remnant ecclesia. The transfer of wealth and assets will be transferred from the wicked, the system, and will be transferred to the kingdom remnant. Then my gospel, which is free, will begin to spread through home groups, the highways, byways, street corners, and open fields. My true gospel will flow with freedom, emphasis on free, freedom, to uh, the ends of the earth. Rejoice, for I am establishing the foundation of my throne on earth as it is in heaven, for my righteousness and justice shall reign. So uh, these are, um, this is all about the judgment, man. And so these guys have prostituted themselves. Uh, They have, and, and God's done with it. He's just done with it. So, and you don't. You've you've said you don't always know how this is going to play out. Of course, no. you don't know all the details. No. You are expecting something has to be done before 2024, perhaps even before midterms. And it, what I heard in that last one was there is a clash coming between the prophets of Baal and and the true prophets of God. The, and, the spirit and so of that clash used, and the spirit of Elijah. So that that's coming soon, right? No, no, that's that's already here. That's here. This 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 clash has already been happening. What he's saying here is it's at the crescendo right now yeah oh good it's it's at the crescendo so but but so god is exposing these false prophets these false ministers uh so this is why i encourage people before you take offense to someone who's being exposed you need to do your due diligence and you need to search the matter out on that person and who it is yeah that's that's really good and actually mark actually as i'm sitting here sometimes people can get get too too into the the details and 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 interpret everything that they see as a sign or as a you know, right. sometimes a triangle is just a triangle. I'm actually looking at your hat right now, and the, the there's a there is a three stars that yep. kind of has a meaning online. Yep. You have a hat with three stars on it. You are mm-hmm. not uh, supporting the three star uh, <laughs> movement. It, it, has no, it has nothing to do with that. It's an American flag, just like right over here. I got a bunch of stars right, right there. It's American flag. Yeah, that's a good point. That, can, that's a good point. I can see. Yeah, I can see that comment already. That, yep. that uh, Mark is not on the three star movement. I don't think. Yeah. Yep. Nope. It just it, this American flag right here, you know. So uh, some things are just there, you know. There's nothing you can do about it. It's like my patent six nine six six. Everybody says, "Oh my God, it's the mark of the beast." No, it's not. It was my ID number. It's three sixes were separated by a nine. The Lord told me the nine represents judgment. He said, "I have called you to prophesy judgment on the system." The six six six. That's why I got the, that ID number. That is so good because I have seen that question too. People have asked that, so that that's really good. Mark, we are we are over an hour at this point. We wanted to keep it right okay, to buddy. an hour. Yep. We really appreciate your time. You've been incredible, and and it's so great to reconnect with you. We, uh, as long as your calendar is is uh, open and you're willing, we're going to have you back on again in the future because we really love staying connected with you and hearing your insight on what's coming next. I appreciate it, brother. I really do. All right. Thanks for being here, Mark. We'll catch you next time. Thank you. It's been an honor.